Welcome everyone again to the critical making demo week presentation of the mentoring. So this is part two, um, where we have again very exciting projects and very amazing people who will present um, their progress uh, that they made throughout the last uh, six months while they were um, in our group. Um, uh, connecting with each other, learning about um, the critical making uh, principles uh, of uh, building sustainably, of uh, having fun while creating, of uh, including uh, local knowledge, of um, having all these kind of different um, values uh, represented um, in the program. And we're extremely excited about today's session um, to share with you um, the results coming out of that and um, to share some videos from participants and some live demos uh, of participants to showcase um, these results. And I'm super happy to have uh, so many uh, people in the room from all over the world. Um, and so hi, Matthew uh, from Uganda. And hi, Jessica, who is currently based in uh, Denmark. And hi, Juliana in Brazil. Hi, Vuga. Hi, Dawa. Hi, Richard. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Bilal. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Elise, Jeffsia. Hi, Ricardo. And hi, Doji. Super cool. And hi, Evison. So nice to have you all uh, in this uh, presentation and to uh, value, uh, like to. Uh, evaluate together with us and to cheer for um, the participants from the mentoring. And so today I have Ricardo as my co-host um, to guide us uh, through the um, through the time we have together, and also Melanie from our team who will uh, bring all these results that you're sharing today uh, also into the social media world. So um, also um, everybody outside of this room uh, can can see you. And so I'm very, very happy for that. And I'm also super excited that uh, many of the um, critical making um, consortium team are joining us here today who created um, this program throughout the last uh, even more than two years now uh, together with us. So, so that's uh, very exciting. And Today we will have um, Christine, Matthew, Juliana, Vuga, Dava, Oscar, and Jafsia presenting. Um, so that will be a very um, exciting group of people um, with really amazing projects. And I should not uh, <laughs> should not give you any insight now because I want you to stay until the end because uh, there's so many nice nice things happening. And so Ricardo. Whom do we have um, first joining us today to present? Hello, everyone. Good to be here. And just like you said, the first presentator is Christine with the so mind-blowing steam water filter kit. Christine, are you there? Yes, Christine is here. Um, and Christine sent us um, a video to uh, that is prepared and also her documentation of the whole project um, on Wikifactory. So we can watch it together. And then we can also be here for um, questions with her. And um, so we're very excited about that. And I just saw the screen share works well, so. Handing over to you, Ricardo. Hello, my name is Christine Kutor. I live and work in Nairobi, Kenya. Making is important to me because I enjoy seeing ideas come to life. I enjoy working with my hands and I'd probably say my favorite material to work with is wood. Uh, wood is very versatile and coupled with digital fabrication technology, I, I believe the ideas of the output are endless. Critical making is important because it allows me to collect the observations of my wooded environment and contribute to the iteration process of coming up with relevant solutions for my community's problems. My prototype is a water filtration stem kit 
we have used the CNC milling machine to cut out this the frame which is in an elephant figure out of a six millimeter plywood the contents of the filtration uh, unit are held together by recycled plastic and the contents are gravel coarse sand fine sand charcoal ash and cotton wool the intended user of these stem kits are students in grade five we intend to educate learners on how to solve their problems using readily available materials. The STEM kit makes education practical, fun, and relevant to the learner's context. It also raises awareness on the importance of providing clean water, as it aims to improve water quality, water use efficiency, and finally, it reduces the impact of plastic waste in the environment by reuse of plastic components within the kit. Thank you. So, congratulations. Uh, it's just an amazing project. Um, we invite you all to send your comments um, in the chat um, that you're having on the project, um, that you um, ideas uh, where you say, oh, please connect with this other maker who is uh, doing a similar thing, or uh, this is something I could use myself and I want to reproduce it, um, or um, I will share it with somebody, or just uh, your appreciation generally for the project um, would be uh, something we would really like um, to see. And uh, this is helping uh, Christine and everybody else uh, a lot um, to, to get your, your comments. And now we will um, run through um, the documentation as well. And I'm asking Christine um, whether uh, your connection um, today is uh, allowing you to also unmute yourself and um, speak about it. Hello, Sandra. Hi, everyone. Oh, yay, it works. Wonderful. Good morning hey. or good lunchtime. <laughs> it's afternoon here, but um, yeah, I'd like to take you through my documentation. Um, this project was based in uh, Lamu. It's a rural coastal town in Kenya. Lamu has experienced accessibility challenges, which have greatly impacted access to education for children. Um, we began this project by focusing on the same educational needs for girls in Lamu. I partnered with my friends who are based at an innovation hub called IOV005, based in Lamu. We wanted to encourage girls to participate in careers such as hydrology, climatology, microbiology, and chemistry. And to start with, we had to get them interested in science. Uh, we picked out an experiment uh, from a grade five textbook and the team decided to improve the system. So we came up with a 3D printed project. This is what you see. But unfortunately we weren't able to implement it because it took too long to print and it was too expensive. So we then decided to have a brainstorm session with the participants to figure out how they solve water challenges at home. A few interesting ideas came up, like using water treatment solutions like chlorine, and um, you know, uh, they used a type of root that I wasn't able to get the name of to clear muddy water. So when they start the muddy water with this root, it just clears up. Um, after this, we decided to make the project more enticing for the children uh, by first introducing them to 2D and 3D design. And uh, with them, after that, we started teaching them how to operate the CNC milling machine uh, to develop this project. Uh, they assembled it using materials, uh, the plastic ma the containers that they were able to. We demonstrated how to create the prototype. And they started making their own using sand, charcoal, ash. These were very inexpensive elements that they could just collect outside. Uh, we got really good feedback from the kids. Uh, the areas of improvement in subsequent generations for us would be painting the wooden frame so that it just becomes waterproof, using thicker wood so that it lasts longer, measuring the highest volume of muddy water that can be filtered through the unit before they need to replace the filtration element so that we know that this, um, this prototype can take us through five months comfortably. And so, 
Um, yeah, for more information, please have a look at the documentation. <laughs> Oh, that's super cool to see, and I love the elephant shape. Okay. Like. We are testing. We are testing our water filtration unit. This is the dirty water, so we're going to test it. Super cool. Thank you so much. And I see in the chat a uh, reaction like, um, yay, I love clean water projects and splendid. And Barbara says we should add the documentation to our critical making educational uh, kit. And um, also saying uh, amazing project and perfectly documented. Um, so really great to see. And I love some more uh, discussion around the actual uh, like testing of the quality of the water. So that's really, really nice um, to see. And I want to ask uh, Ricardo as our evaluator of documentation to give uh, a tiny comment around that. What can I say, Sandra, about the project despite of adding a heart? You know, so I added a heart to my screen. I love it. And I would suggest to build the giraffe with one liter and a half bottles, you know, because I love giraffes as well. And then we have the small elephant, the big giraffe. Oh my God. It's so amazing. It's so incredible. Thank you so much, Christine and your partner for developing this. And, and I would add to it in terms of um, the process. Uh, I think it's amazing how um, you um, connect also uh, with the local hub and with the local school um, to really work together uh, very closely and uh, bring in uh, all the ideas. And I actually appreciate a lot if during the prototyping phase, um, it comes out that uh, 3D printing is not the best solution for this uh, because reusing uh, uh, materials that are already there uh, is so often, um, um, yeah, the, the perfect uh, way to go. So a lot of appreciation. And I can really imagine the next project to be one of the many open source, um, um, how is it called? Uh, microscopes uh, out there um, to build with the kids and then to also test the water quality together. So that's uh, just an amazing thing uh, to do. Thank you, Sandra. Wonderful. Thank you. And if any of you still have questions for Christine, please still add them in the chat. Um, we will uh, share, of course, all the chat messages also again with the participants. Um, and that's a lot appreciated. Um, so thank you. Now I would hand over to the next um, of our wonderful speakers. Um, and Ricardo, whom do we have for us? Now it's Mr. Lubaris time, you know, Matthew's always present in our meetings and so, so we are happy that you are here again and now presenting this 
prototype for facilitating life of everyone, the Equistar extension, uh, extension cable. I will share your video. I mix the cable with share, you know? I will cable your video. <laughs> Hi, my name is Matthew and I'm a refugee from South Sudan. I'm a maker, fixer and an advocate for repair and reuse. I am one of the participants to the critical making, which is very important in that making things uh, helps in solving everyday uh, My challenge. project is uh, do it yourself for livelihood and at making a wooden extension cables. Uh, which are cost effective and environmental friendly and uh, it's intended to replace the power extension cables that are made up of plastic materials um, the wooden extension cable it's uh, made up of local available resources that is to say uh, a wood materials basically and which are cost effective and is uh, aimed at reducing carbon emissions and uh, landfills from uh, plastic waste and since they are environmental friendly than those made out of you know uh, plastic materials and you know uh, uh, protecting the environment uh, from pollution and waste um, it is also uh, aimed at inspiring and uh, empowering the youth to embrace open uh, technology and local production using the available resources for improved livelihood and uh, self reliance um, we used the materials that you use for manufacturing uh, materials wood and extension that can be cables, in, uh, include uh, timbers and the match screwed, uh, screws uh, shine paper uh, hoop iron LED lights uh, connecting wires sockets switches glue and paint and uh, we often use uh, tools that we normally borrow from uh, 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 people and uh, those tools include the cutting shows uh, drilling machine uh, smoothing machine cutter a uh, type measure uh, a pencil among measuring uh, ruler screwdrivers hammer and uh, soldering kit uh, during this uh, critical uh, making mentorship I was able to learn about uh, how important it is to engage stakeholders you know, in, in a project because it uh, helps you know, bring them together to know and learn uh, how things can be done. And uh, I was so happy you know, to also learn about uh, uh, how to uh, make your project you know, to generate revenue, for example, learning uh, the business models in uh, making things that make sense thank you so much for watching and i'm so excited and uh, willing to see you and seeing your feedback and your comments or if you want to know more please contact us on the following you know email Wonderful. Congratulations, Matthew. Such an inspiring video, uh, including all, all that we need to know, uh, including your bill of materials even, and uh, all these perspectives. Um, that's just amazing. Ricardo, do you want to share? Yes. Oh, Matthew, do you want to tell us a little bit more about your project? Yeah, sure. I just have a couple of things that I wanted to share. But in the first place, I'm so sorry that my video exceeded the limit. <laughs> that is supposed to be up to two minutes, but mine reached up to three minutes and some seconds. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but I want to 
just to say something in regards to the experience that I got while making uh, this project or working on this project. I'm super excited that I was able to learn a skill, especially in uh, woodwork or in regard to carpentry. Yeah, because I still remember when I was trying to handle the, the show and uh, uh, someone who is technical in the team was like, no, you're not supposed, it's not supposed to be handled like this. So hold it like this. And I was, you know, so excited with that. And as well, I learned also that um, collaboration is key, uh, especially uh, in working out on a project. Uh, Thanks to Edina Dawa, whom today uh, we are celebrating the International Women Day for the women. Uh, she was able you know, to point out to me uh, how to add the pictures in Wiki Factory. You know, I did not have idea on how uh, adding pictures you know, could work, right? but it was so amazing that she was able to, uh, to share with, uh, with me how uh, it is to be added. So I'm still learning and improving on my documentation and uh, see that there will be uh, quite a number of changes that uh, I will apply to in terms of the documentation. So uh, and also invite for collaborators to, uh, to give me feedback and as well help me when necessary in adjusting uh, the documentation. Uh, the most challenge is that we we faced while working on the project but that's uh, limited tools you know access to tools was not as easy could travel a long distance to use those power tools uh, from the nearby city and uh, we hope that uh, uh, we could get support in order to uh, to trans i mean to, to to extend or to expand and continue with the uh, the projects in more especially in making things so that we can promote make culture in uh, in africa and in the refugee camps as well and i pray that we or i hope that we we get the necessary uh, resources uh for promoting you know the make culture and uh we are open for support in both in kind and uh, in of funds, it's highly welcome to support and purchase all the necessary tools and equipments or set up, you know, uh, uh, a minimal uh, uh, maker space or improve on our current maker space in Rhino Camp. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, that's a really important cause. Um, and I invite everyone to support it. And, now I ask Ricardo, what's your evaluation of the documentation from Matthew? Uh, I will add another reaction, you know, the strong arm, because sometimes a maker space should be built step by step. And the first step is always electricity. And sometimes it's so hard to get it. So thank you so much, Matthew, to making this so clear for everyone. And it's good to say that it's also safe, you know, because wood uh, protects, for example, children from electricity steps. Yes, thank you. And I also see um, comments in the chat of uh, amazing project and very well made video documentation. And great to hear also that you have plans to continue. I think that's always really good to see this kind of what are the open issues in one project? What are the, the things people still want to create and where are good um, connection points also for collaboration? So I appreciate that a lot. Um, uh, Bilal says hope and pray, so <laughs> maybe he wants to elaborate on that, but I think he's also boarding his flight. <laughs> so he's uh, laughing. <laughs> That's really nice. So thank you all. Thank you, Matthew. Congratulations again to this amazing project showing us uh, that things doesn't need to be um, like they have always been created uh, in the past uh, many years uh, out of plastic and we can reimagine, reimagine products uh, also. 
So now looking again at Ricardo, who do you have for us now? Continuing talking about wood and children, uh, there are people from Casa Criatura, Juliana uh, and Isaac are on the screen and they live quite close from home, like just 278 kilometers. So welcome people, I will share your screen and you can tell us about your project. Welcome, Juliana. Good morning. <laughs> And my yes. friend, Evie, is the introduction. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Evison. I am an architect and urbanist, uh, collaborator of Casa Criatura. I will be doing the translations uh, for Isaac and Juliana of the presentation of the games. But in case of some questions, I can ask them to translate. I share my screen for a while. Uh, just a moment. Okay, I think we're going to, to use this one first. Yeah, you're allowed to share your screen and maybe for the others, uh, just as a tiny um, input. It's so, so cool that Casa Creatura managed to um, also participate, always having somebody um, to translate. Um, it's really, really nice. So, Ivison, uh, Andrea, Are you seeing go my ahead. screen right now? Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. So, this is Turning the Game, is the name of our project. This document is still not translated yet, but I'll try to pass it through and make it easy for you to learn. So the basic context of the game is that education is a fundamental right, but it was limited in some communities in Brazil because of the lack of access to technology during the COVID-19 pandemics. So considering the reality, the, the economic reality of those communities, which the remote format of the classes wasn't possible for the most part of the kids. We developed artifacts that could be easily used by the children in case at home uh, to educational uh, goals. And the context that we use the most to develop the, the games was inspired by the perspective, uh, the creative perspective of their daughter uh, that also pass through the system of remote learning. And, and we also got inspired specifically uh, of heritage, architectonical uh, heritage of our city, uh, highlighting the icons and the architectonical references and also the culture to simulate the feeling uh, of belonging from the children. Uh, so Juliana and Isaac uh, are the ones that idealized Casa Criatura uh, in the city of Olinda, and they joined the uh, television show uh, really popular in Brazil in 2020, and they tried to uh, grab the uh, millionaire prize of the show to invest uh, on this project uh, in the educational area for the kids, but they wasn't uh, contemplated with the prize. So they kept asking for uh, support uh, with crowdfunding campaigns. And that's a, a little graphic explaining the optimization of the material. We use this board of plywood, uh, with more than two meters by one and 60 centimeters. Uh, you can make 88 pieces uh, of the game using just one board. Usually split the, the board in six different rectangles in order to fit in the machine. And that's the process of production. Uh, first we uh, cut the small squares and then we engrave uh, the information of the games 
then we subtract some pieces and then we add the finishings and painting and there's different kind of subjects for the games uh, one of them is the alphabet uh, it represents all the letters of the alphabet the brazilian alphabet uh, trying to develop the motors and cognitive skills for children between three and six years old here's some pictures We also have one for the numbers, the same logic. For the shapes. Living beings. Emotions. And also about towns and icons of the cities. If so, you should release the scroll button of your mouse to your computer think a little bit. Okay. I think it's just amazing. Um, thank you so much for this presentation. And really yeah, okay. nice to see. And for anyone uh, wanting to check it out, um, the link is also in the chat now um, where you can also check out the documentation and uh, you will able to just use some kind of uh, automatic translation for now until it's also there in English. Um, but I think uh, translations are always uh, working quite nicely. So uh, thank you so much, um, Juliana and Isaac and also Yveson for the translations. That's yeah, just in such a fun project uh, that brings together again all the different aspects uh, we love in critical making with um, the colorful uh, educational purposes um, with uh, being uh, yeah working on uh, environmentally friendly um, aspects and also again um, working together with the community that actually will use um, the product and the project so that's super super nice to see and i will ask ricardo for a comment on the documentation and you all of course please as well so i'll right be super chat. people you know I, th I i love the work they've been doing for so long and I know them personally, so I cannot say anything despite I love the idea that you donated so many of these toys to this city in the countryside, in the area region of the country, like 400 kilometers from Olinda, that is called Serra Talhada. So congratulations you for the project. I love that the files online and the documentation is super nice. I hope people can replicate it all around the globe. I hope so as well. So good to see you here. Congratulations again. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Ricardo. And thank you for translating. Um, that's really, really helpful. So, Ricardo, how do we go on in our wonderful session with these amazing um, results of our Sorry, good project. to remember me, you know, our <laughs> next presentation is Vuga. I have his video here as well. I just need some few seconds to click the share screen button that is somewhere around one of the screens. Here we is. also welcome you, Vuga here live. So that's also amazing uh, that it worked out. So... <laughs> My name is Doreen and I'm here to tell you about the amazing work we are doing for the community of Pagania refugee settlement in Ajumani district. We are Youth Empowerment Foundation and YEF is a 
refugee-led organization, we are supporting local communities to solve their problems through skills development, technology, media, and most recently, a youth space. Imagine building a huge house like this one without any bricks or timber. Paginia Satellite was built using rammed earth technology like maram, clay soil, stone dust, river sand, and some little cement. You must be wondering why we, we did choose uh, this kind of building. There are about three major reasons why we did so. And one is that the round earth technology helps to conserve environment because you're using materials that are within that environment. For example, in our case, we had to use materials that we could be able to get from within uh, the settlement of uh, Pagirinya. We didn't also have to go and cut down trees because we didn't need timber. And then we did not really need to take a lot of time burning bricks that were of no need to us. And then also because in our case we're combining uh, a design of a hut and that of a bungalow, we were able to create a one single building that uh, has proper aeration, proper lighting and many spaces where we could receive uh, the natural sun and that's our natural lighting. So with that we're able to or we are able to reduce on the cost of uh, electricity. With uh, this kind of uh, a housing prototype you're able to allow proper ventilation and thus you're able to keep away bacteria and virus and that helps to minimize the spread of airborne diseases. It's a real uh, good experience to me, me and my community that learned like to build this kind of a house and this house specifically uh, will address so many issues. Basically, uh, people will learn also to help uh, the vulnerables, like the PSN, people with uh, special needs. Uh, the building this kind of house is uh, cost effective and it is cheaper because we have all the material within us and to also give uh, rooms and uh, it will also create a job opportunity for the young people who have these new skills. As seeing as funding that they are receiving, that is what we uh, have has learned much and uh, people are inspired, people are very happy, they still need more. Okay, our mission is uh, to promote uh, IT skills for refugees youth who are in the settlement and um, to provide for them access to employment. But also we envision that uh, the responsive uh, open source modular housing prototype would help us create a community space where people can meet, connect, interact and uh, most importantly learn and benefit from our projects. Congratulations, Buga and everybody at Jeff. Um, as you see, um, this is not created in the past six months, uh, this whole house, uh, just as part of the critical making uh, project, because it's a much, much bigger project that we are very proud uh, to be able to support a tiny bit uh, in uh, the critical making um, mentoring. So, um, we're very, very um, happy to have uh, Jeff as part of this. And now you see um, Ricardo um, shares the presentation of the documentation. And I invite Vuga also, if you can, to unmute you and to tell us a tiny bit more about maybe what you also did in the past six months uh, to advance the project. Uh, OK, thank you so much. and. Uh... I really appreciate and uh, I wish uh, happy Women's Day for the lady who are in the house right now. And my journey for all this started in uh, 2019 when we have uh, the first sections, uh, um, the same room with uh, Richard Ricardo's when we were in Berlin, that is the Geek Dots. So we were talking about uh, principles of uh, making, uh, critical making. Then when I, I come back home and I sit down and look at uh, situations where the young people 
and uh, refugees conduct where we face because we use both uh, uh, resources that are available with host community and refugees. Uh, then one way the other, I, I also step in how uh, refugees can also bring a change into community. So by through makerspace. So we thought with my community looking at the material that can uh, build a house. And we wanted uh, to demonstrate where people also run away from using timbers and uh, burning bricks so that uh, not to reduce cutting down trees and of which is also global. And we feel like uh, this is one of one way the other. Uh, using a component of uh, open source at the same time um, uh, media and digital culture information through all these uh, prototypes then we we started this i it took me real quite long moving around checking all these materials and however the challenge we have is uh, we want the house to be model so that we can transfer it to other places but however since this is a prototype uh, it costs us also we, uh, however, we want to run away from using bricks, but at the end we use a brick a little bit like uh, making the cycles, the cycle rooms, because it's difficult for us to get a material that can bend uh, and make the uh, F uh, rub technology. So uh, through all the sections, I learned a lot of a lot of things, like when it comes for the documentation part, and this is something amazing to me and as a refugee as well. Because we did a lot of uh, project, a lot of work, but uh, we did not uh, do the specifications. I think um, when we are doing this, and the first approach we do was uh, using GitHub and pairs looking at the processes of the community. All this thing has the idea of a computer and a digital. So, uh, and we, we thought, why is how do we impact ourselves like when it comes to peer to peer learning? So that's how the prototype house I took. Uh, huge rest on my chest so that uh, when it for young people also to learn how do we do yeah. then from the training i learned i think this would be the part from where we want all the refugees to so submit their ideas so that they can sell global with the people so it's amusing uh, it is a good experience for me to be part of this it's a long journey so we have to make together thank you so much Um, I maybe just want to add to that, Sandra, that... Yes, please. <laughs> oh, thank you, Vuga. Uh, I think it's so amazing, the project, because you show everyone, it's a nod to all the makers all around, you know? We have so many different kind of makers. And it's also good to know that we have, like, Casa Criatura in this same session, and they are architects and work with so many different things. And I think you have so much in common to collaborate. And regarding your future, you were talking to me some time ago uh, how you could add content to your lab, you know, and then maybe it's the next step for everyone present here to find ways to grab more content related projects to run into EAF. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo, and uh, thank you, Fuga, uh, for representing today, Jeff, um, at this session. And as you all saw, it's a true, like, none of our projects that we're presenting today are created by just one person alone. It's always, always uh, so important to uh, create them as part of a community and as part of a team and um, to, to then show this also um, to the world, how we can yeah, help to replicate uh, also the projects uh, in the next phase. And I see um, comments in the chat, like from Barbara, wow, um, it's just very impressive. And from Katrin uh, Vuga, this is ho pure hope you are showing us. Uh, thank you so much. So thanks a lot for the comments in the chat also. And um, congratulations again, Vuga. And now I turn to Ricardo to introduce us to the next participant who is on our list of uh, demoing today. Our next participant is Edna Dawa or Dava. Dava, please let me know if it's one or other, but I have a video here I want to share. So just one bit of moment, like bits like the computers, you know, and for some reason, it's not play. Oh, it's a JPEG. It's a wonderful picture. <laughs> yes, isn't it? So that was the picture I had to share with you all. 
And now I'm sharing the documentation of the project, the do-it-yourself solar phone charger. We are um, talking about electricity just a few minutes ago. Yeah, and now we have Dava also present here. Um, so we invite you to um, tell us more about your project. Okay, thank you. This is my project. It's all about building a portable solar mobile phone charger. I am from Rhino Camp and where there is no electricity in my community. Like we mostly depend on the solar that like the charging systems that were distributed by UN Solar some, some time back. That was in 2016. But afterwards, all those things disappeared because we were given the things and like there was no procedures to tell like, use this like this, you maintain it like this. So we were just using anyhow and we end up, we end up like spoiling everything. So like the challenges are so much affecting the women. So I decided to come up with this project like I was like, if we are facing this challenge, what about if I come up like with the, a solar charger, a small one that you can put in your compound and charge your phone. So I came up with this and during the critical making sessions, like after the session, which was about make things that make sense. At the first, my, my system was, was a bit big. So I was like, let me make something that can make sense. So I decided to reduce it. I have some pictures that are also not yet included here. I'm still working on the documentation. In few days, I'm going to add them there. So I learned a lot from this mentorship program. Like at the first, I didn't know something about the SDGs, but after the sessions, I came to realize and my project is also under those things. So like here, I have like the instructions or the procedures like when building a solar charger. At the first I came with the, the sketch or the drawing. And then I identified like the tools and the materials that I needed for like for me to build this. Like you can see from the pictures, the, some, those are some of the the materials and the tools that I used. Then here I was like the prototype. I was not yet sure whether it was going to work or not. That's why I first used the breadboard. After testing, the thing was working. Then I now transferred the knowledge to like the materials exactly where I did, I transferred it now to the circuit board where I also got a casing for it. And like this, the whatever the solar panels, the solar panels were two. And like cutting two of them, it was hard. So I got a, a tablet cover that was thrown away. I picked and cut. That's how it is. You like you can fold it to be smaller and put it in your bag. So that's what I came up with. I also have a video that I did not share with you. I don't know if I have the time to share my screen. Yeah, we can uh, still check a short video. Um, you're allowed to share your screen. Like technically. <laughs> And while you're searching for that, um, it's just, uh, again, uh, such a nice uh, project to um, share with uh, you all, because it's uh, bringing so many things together. Ah, and this is cool. So I think you need to also share the audio. sometimes a little bit complicated. You have to share your screen again, Agna. You have to close it and share again. And once you share, there's a small option in the bottom, almost hidden 
right in the left corner, call it share sound. And while you're doing that, uh, I would ask Ricardo to uh, comment on the documentation. I like the picture, you know, of the project in the grass because it's it's not about roots, it's about grassroots, you know, it's super grassroots to need electricity and find a way to charge your phone with a tablet phone. So thank you, Edna. And uh, adding to that, I appreciate so much um, the business model that you also imagine for your project, uh, where it is uh, to help uh, women to gain some livelihood also through the project, uh, to recreate um, the charger for themselves, and then to um, also charge, for example, um, for some electricity, um, if possible. So now I hope it worked out and I would ask you to start your video. I don't know whether you're able to see my screen. Yes, we see. Okay. So. Across the nations, all around the world, we Hi, I'm Bella Edina Hilar, a South Sudanese refugee in Uganda. And one of the participants for the food call making mentorship program. And I'm working on a project called the Do It Yourself Solar Mobile Phone Charger. I came up with that project because of the problem we are facing in the community. Thank you so much, Dawa. That was amazing to see. And uh, it's an especially good occasion today with uh, the uh, International Women's Day. Yeah, perfect song choosing. <laughs> And I'm just reading the comments from the chat. Uh, Mustafa says, really nice project. Oscar says, wonderful project. Um, and Katrin says, it reminds me a little of Solar Mamas. Uh, so that's uh, probably something to check out. Uh, greetings go out to all my strong, beautiful, and skilled fellow women on International Women's Day. And uh, great project and well documented uh, also for the video, Hannah says. So congratulations, Dawa to the project and we're very very much uh, wanting to see how it uh, develops further so thanks a lot thank, thank you, you so much yeah, thank you, Ricardo. sorry sorry <laughs> like, me. Ricardo, like i saw you for the first time yesterday during the call though we are chatting on telegram but i never i have never seen you before <laughs> Uh, I seen yeah, you. that's that's so nice. Also, um, about the whole like collaboration here, um, I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo. So much. How do we so want to go forward in the session today? Who is oh, it's Oscar's time. You know, we are entering our own last thirty minutes of presentation, and it's now Oscar's time to tell more about his project, but I will share a video first. 
Hello, Barbara. Yeah, hi. I just want to say bye-bye and thanks again to all of you. I just have to rush to another meeting, but I think this shows us how much worth it was to apply to get this critical project funded. And I'm super happy and, and very proud of all the projects. So thanks a lot. And we continue with make also. So there will be hopefully more opportunities in the future. Bye-bye. Talk Thank to you soon. You, Barbara. Bye bye. And I will share in the chat uh, one opportunity we have in the Make project uh, because I think that is an opportunity also for many of our participants in the critical making program uh, to to connect with. Um, so you will see more info in the chat and check it out uh, and see whether it suits your needs. And now I ask Ricardo to share the video that Oscar shared with us and then um, also ask Oscar to uh, speak with us a little bit. Thank you. My name is Oscar Ndaisenga and I'm from the working at the Texas startup that is specialized in green fiber production from Agroalta for textile and the fashion industry. The problem is that uh, the Agroalta are banning into fiber. Is the how to really the green now? Sorry, really. Problem. Can you hear it? Yes, you have to make it hard, louder, <laughs> like for yourself. Uh, the fiber from these systems and uh, these fibers are used for all different uh, purposes um, uh, by producing different products like uh, the handicraft and the collection um, and product. As the Ecofitext, we would like to uh, use this for production, for the production of the sanitary part for local community because they are, uh, have a uh, problem to access uh, affordable sanitary part, especially for little girl and woman. Uh, our selection, uh, our selection is that uh, all product from producing from uh, uh, the green fiber from stems of banana are 100% biodegradable. It's a safe collaborable and uh, reusable. Uh, also, and very cheaper. Uh, we have. Uh, the money power that is uh, also so uh, um, cheaper and the uh, low material is uh, uh, viable. Uh, as weakness, we miss, uh, we are missing uh, expertise and uh, business and development skills. Um, we have uh, a social uh, distribution. We have uh, the impact. Uh, the social impact is uh, improving uh, economies of local community, creating a job and uh, job for youth and uh, women, and uh, also uh, reducing the emission, uh, pollution emission, CO2 uh, emission, and the pollution of our environment. Uh, when I will, we will be, I will be uh, selected, I would like to share uh, my uh, cloud founding that will be created for me in my social network with my friend, with my uh, non contact that I have on LinkedIn, on uh, Facebook, on uh, Instagram uh, and uh, try to contact each uh, organization uh, in order to let them know about this. And um, we will really be happy if we select, uh, select it uh, and uh, we try our best for promoting our law funding. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oscar, for also sharing the video with us. Uh, I hope everybody was able to also increase the volume for yourself um, to hear it. And um, 
What I like uh, a lot about your project is to create textiles out of new materials. Oh, I see, I didn't start my video. <laughs> uh, to create textiles out of locally available materials uh, and to contribute to sustainability in this way. And on Women's Day, uh, we can appreciate as well how uh, these textiles then uh, can be used for menstrual pads for um, women and um, yeah, that's really something something great to see. And now I would ask Ricardo to share um, the document with the current uh, state of the documentation that you shared with us so that we see um, the banana fiber um, part of it. Um, and maybe you can scroll down to the pictures, um, which is really great. And we can ask Oscar also to um speak about it if possible yeah yes awesome great yeah uh, yeah technology that we are developing for uh helping uh, that would help us to produce the good fibers and uh, contribute to develop also the good product that they come by using this technology, by using this machinery that we are in the end of our finishing it. Yeah. Great, thanks a lot. And um, so you see the current state um, of the document is uh, that there is not yet the uh, full documentation to be able to rebuild it, but that is also because uh, it's um, yeah still in development uh, to create the machine to then um, be able to share it. And it's really nice, nice to see um, what you're working on. Congratulations. And yes, that was also, ah, Ricardo. Congratulations, Oscar. It's, it's super amazing, you know, it's tracked things from nature instead of using plastic, just like how we started the day today. And to finish our day today, uh, we will check Jafsia walk, you know, Jafsia, I don't know how to spell it. Yes, it is Jafsia. Thank you, Jafsia. So I will share the video I have it from you and it's on the share screen button. How is it? Here it is. Hi, my name is Javsia Yeke. I'm from Cameroon. I'm currently a member of the Mboa Lab team. Mboa Lab is an open space dedicated to digital fabrication based in Yaoundé, the capital of the country. Within the maker space, uh, I try to imagine innovative solution to improve the lives of our students, surrounding community. And this is how I come up with the idea of designing the 3D wireless digital stethoscope in order to help the medical profession in my own way, uh, in the Krasat against, anti, uh, against the COVID-19. Notably, the respect of social distancing, which are one of the measures of fights against the spread of the virus. Making yes, but um, making how? The answer will be making critically by taking into account the social and environmental impacts that underpin the innovation as it should not create more problem than itself. By taking into account factors related to inclusion so that all social strata can benefit. But above all, by placing innovation in line with the sustainable de development goals in terms of good health for all. To do this, I was inspired by a few existing projects, notably the 3D printed stethoscope of the GLIA team and GLIA project, and also the Foyoscope, which are open source projects. 
I was able to imagine a 3D system that can accommodate and electrate and, cap and capture the sound with the objective of facilitating the work of uh, medical practitioners uh, in the appreciation of the pulse rate of patients by limiting the contact between the two. Um, the reduction of contact will mean the reduction of contamination between patients and caregivers who are the main users of our innovation. Next, we can see a test of our solution. Thank you so much, Ricardo. And uh, I would love if you could also um, share the slides with us um, that Jeff Sarah shared. It's uh, the link next to the documentation. And we would ask um, Jeff Sarah to speak about it. OK, thank you so much, Sandra and Ricardo. My project was about building a a 3D printed stethoscope and add a wireless solution. Why the project? The why of the project uh, was because uh, digital stethoscope, the high cost of digital existing stethoscopes, um, the contamination, because sometimes the same stethoscope is used for many patients. And also to protect to protect the, the the medical practitioner and limit the distance they have with their patients. And that's how we come with the the 3D printed wireless digital stethoscope by using a 3D printed technologies. And our bill of material is quite simple. We have an Arduino, you know. A Bluetooth module, an LM393 module, an omnidirectional microphones, and jumping wires and a breadboard. With uh, all these things put together, we were able to design and with our electronic circuit, we were able to design and to come up with uh, our 3D printed wireless digital stethoscope. As we can, there, there is also a, our video showing the, how we use the prototype. So maybe we can watch it and see how the prototypes behave. Is this, this video here? Yes, I think... Um, by the third minute of the video. Oh, Ricardo, if you unshare your screen and you check the um, the video that was in the folder as well, um, I think it's the same video and we just take the last last minute from it to check out the actual. Um, the last minute from the video already share it. Yes, um, there was a, a longer version that we can share also. Oh, I don't have access to this longer ah, Okay, version. good. Then. Uh... Okay, are you guys able to see? Um, yes. Drafters? Awesome. Yes. Okay, so I think it should be at 2.38. Yeah. Our email. And Jeff said you can also explain to us uh, what we see. Yeah, exactly. That's um, the electronic circuit uh, with my um, 
HM10 module and uh, the LM and uh, the LM393 module. That's uh, my mounted printed parts connected to a microphone, and the, the microphone is also connected to the LM393. Here we have the pulse rate. You have the pulse rate uh, in our terminal, and then we can also uh, has have it in our directly with the Bluetooth module. We, we can transfer it wirelessly to our smartphone. Mm, that's where it came comes the the aspect of the wirelessness. So um, that's exactly what it is. We, we can have our pulse rate directly uh, on our cell phone without any contact with uh, the patient. So the, the doctor can have the cell phone reading the pulse rate while the the patient is uh, hold, holding the, the stethoscope on his chest. So uh, that's what was the idea behind building, designing this, the 3D printed wireless stethoscope. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, can you stop the screen sharing? So congratulations, uh, Jeff said, to the current state of the prototype. It's really amazing to see, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to see how it further develops um, and how it's also then uh, working in the, uh, in the field. And it's really cool to see also your connection um, with the actual, like uh, with an actual makerspace uh, and um, with Mboa Lab, who is working, so, that is working so much um, in this field of creating medical devices as well. Um, so that's uh, really wonderful to see, to not like be in it alone, but to really have like a strong team also to collaborate with. Um, Thank you so much. So, and I see um, now, Ricardo, do you want to share some insights around the documentation? The GitHub project is super, super rich. I just couldn't find the code to test on my Arduino kit here, you know, but I know it's somewhere. Uh, congratulations, it's really, really, really good. Really, really amazing project to move forward. And connect so much with Carebus, you know, where Casa Creatura was involved and many people here were involved as well. So hope we can be part of the next Carebus. Yes, that will be wonderful. And also to see see even more what's what's coming out of um, of these developments and with this I thank you all so much um, for joining uh, the session of the critical making demo week and I would love to ask our participants uh, for one final statement on uh, what like inspired the most um, in the program and what um, maybe um, around the, the areas of um, the teachings that we, we had, what, what helped you in your, in your creations. And I would love to ask uh, Christine first, uh, she was uh, presenting first, what you take with you out of the program. She's still here. No, maybe not. <laughs> it's always uh, it's always a, a, um, an interesting uh, check uh, about uh, the connectivity. Hi. Now I hear someone who unmuted themselves. Ah, Hello, Richard. Sandra. Hey, Richard. So good to hear you. Um, thank you. So um, your, your last question, I didn't actually get it well. 
Yeah, I was asking, um, what do you take out of the critical making program now um, into your next uh, steps? Um, what what inspired you? Um, generally, out of the whole training, uh, there's one session that actually uh, made me feel like I'm in the right place. And it was about the, uh, I think something related to marketing or something like that. So initially, I used just to, to build things only for the purpose of building, but not really looking as far as um, the marketing. So I think now we lost you. That's so sad. Um, I hope uh, you will be able to reconnect. And I would love to ask also Andrew, because yesterday we needed to see your um, video and also your documentation uh, without you being able to comment on it. Um, so I would love to try out whether uh, you can now um, tell us a little bit more about your experience. Um, and what you take um, from the mentoring into your next phase. Wafela, do you hear us? No, you all see my str our all <laughs> struggles sometimes. We have so lovely check-ins uh, often. Um, oh, no, it works. Yay. Andrew, we hear you. Hello. Hello. We we hear you a little bit. Hello. Ah. It will not work out to properly understand you. That's so sad. I hope we can have another occasion to, to chat about the outcomes for yourself. Um, yes, Matthew. Yes. So uh, once again, I'm so excited. And my take away from this critical uh, 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 mentorship program is that uh, as makers, you should not only focus on uh, making things, uh, but also look at the environmental factor, uh, including uh, its uh, sustainability of the project. So that is my takeaway from uh, the mentorship program, and as well ensure that you document uh, what you have done so that you can have a record of your journey of what you have done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, that's really um, something that is uh, resonating so much. Uh, and I really love that this is uh, your outcome. Um, that's amazing. Um, and I want to thank you all uh, for joining the session. I would love to uh, here, final final round of applause, uh, if that's possible virtually. Maybe you all can unmute yourself, and it will be a, a fun audio experience um, for our participants today and also yesterday. So, thank you all. It's really really cool and. Really good to see um, what you have been doing and what your outcomes are. It's just very, very heartwarming. And thank you so much. And this would be my final words for today. <laughs> and, and I, I think, you... uh, ah, and Ricardo, yes, please. <laughs> no, quite quickly. I think the end of the project is the beginning of a nice WhatsApp group. You know, I hope. We can keep exchanging the group now that you know each other's projects so much better. It's time to, to share more what we have been doing and to collaborate and to 
bring sustainability to the world. I trust you, Matthew. <laughs> Wonderful. Jeff said, do you want to add? Oh, why not? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I want to thank um, all our instructor. I want to thank Ricardo for the feedbacks. I want to thank Sandra to, to accept me embarrassing her every time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I know uh, it was very amazing. I, I learned a lot um, in terms of sustainable development goal. And I think uh, actually, I, I know that I, I don't only have to, to make, make uh, uh, by the coming days, I will start making critically. That's, uh, that's, that's the main takeaway from this program. Thank you once more, Sandra. Thank you, the Geek team. Thank you, Ricardo. And uh, let's keep in touch. Um, let's vivify our uh, WhatsApp group. That's, uh, that's my, my, my final request. Wonderful. Thank you. And I want to especially also thank Hannah Zari from VTT um, for um, her teaching around the sustainable development goals and connecting uh, this very like explorative um, research also with our group. Um, so that's really, really nice. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. That was that was nice. It it has been great to see all these projects evolving and be, be part of this. So it's been great. And these two days seeing all of your projects has been so heartwarming and so so great. So and we are still, I hope, seeing uh, every one of you in the exit interviews. So that's still coming up next week, but otherwise, yeah, it has been great. And thank you. Wonderful. And in the spirit. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Juliana or Dava, do you want to add something? I'm yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, my English is a little limited, but um, I'm very happy to see uh, the other projects uh, I I need to uh, Ruiz me ajuda help <laughs> eu queria dizer que é, eu ficaria muito feliz em poder contribuir com outros projetos também a gente aqui na criatura tem outras expertise e aí se você quiser me ajudar nessa tradução Ruiz <laughs> unmute yourself Ricardo <laughs> Ricardo, we can hear you with the translation. Oh, um, it's super easy, you know. Uh, collaboration in projects. Casa Criatura has expertise. Let's go. It's English for all. You were speaking of really good English already. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. And Dawa? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the takeaway I got from this program, like at first it was the tool that was given like to monitor your pro your progress. I don't remember the exact name for that tool, but that's the takeaway for me. Then secondly, the session of make things that make sense. That's also a takeaway. So I have two takeaways. And I was like, since the like the program is coming to an end, what's next? Like when I have problem, do I also go back to the mentors or the program has ended and I should find my own way? 
Uh, I think we're all wanting to stay connected, which it would be amazing, and also to connect further through the gig community and through the existing WhatsApp group, and also to reach out uh, to the mentors, of course. Um, and officially, the program ends, sadly, because every program uh, comes to an end at some point. Um, but uh, I think the connection made through it uh, will go beyond um, the the actual project duration so that's wonderful to see thank you all and yeah thank you all and I see and I say goodbye and see you soon bye people enjoy the rest of your days and talk to you tomorrow <laughs> bye bye Bye.